Let's look at a little demonstration here. And again, what I want you to think about as you plan these presentations, come up with something that is informative, something that shows a specific property of matter. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of these that you've already come up with that show a lot of properties, but focus on one specific property, the most interesting property. And I'm going to get something here and show you a little demonstration of what something might look like. I'll show you a good way to do it, and I'll show you a bad way to do it. This is the chemical that I'm going to be demonstrating, and it's something called lycopodium. Now, on this, it has a warning label. That warning label tells you one of the properties of this lycopodium, and that just happens to be the property that I'm going to be demonstrating. And if I look on the front here, it says danger. That's a good sign, right? But it says danger, flammable solid. What does it mean if it's flammable? It means that um, if you put like something hot under it or something, it can um, burn, burn. Okay, yeah, it means it can burn. If we put something hot enough by it, if we set it on fire, it will burn, right? So we have our flammable solid here. Now. This is a really cool chemical because you can do some neat stuff with it. But I could just take a little bit of this lycopodium, right? Scoop it out. This is a solid. This is yellow. Those are two of its physical properties. Again, was that informative? Did I give you some good accurate information? Yes. I did double the work. I showed you two properties, right? Was it a good presentation? No, it was not. Again, a good presentation, especially when we're talking about science, you know, science is interesting, science is exciting. A good presentation needs to be a little bit exciting. It needs to be interesting. It needs to be something people will want to watch. So, We've got this nice flammable liquid. We can talk about how it's a solid. We can talk about its soft powdery texture. We can talk about its color. But let's talk about a more interesting property. Let's talk about its flammability. So I'm going to take my lycopodium here. I'm going to get a little pile of it. And again, it says danger, flammable solid. Is this going to explode when I light it? Let's light it on fire here. It looks exactly like a candle. You're right. And it's burning about like a candle would. Now, does this seem to match up to the warning label? Danger. Flammable solid. Yes. Danger. Does this look dangerous? No. But when you put a I mean, I guess if we filled a room up with it and lit it, yes, it might make a big fire, right? Eventually. Yes. But here's the interesting thing. It's not dangerous because of this. It's dangerous because of something else. Let me, I'm just going to cap a jar over that. That'll, that'll cut off its air, maybe. I don't know if it'll still good enough to cut off its air or not, honestly. But we want it to burn out. I may need to just put something on it. There it goes. All right, so it used up all its oxygen in the jar, and our fire went out. Our dangerous, flammable, solid lycopodium. But Again, we're going to make this interesting. Let me show you why this has a warning label. It's not because of that. It's because of what we're going to do next. All right, so we've got a little bit of lycopodium burning here. But what I want you to see, I'm just going to take a little bit more lycopodium. I'm, I'm going to sprinkle this very fine powder onto our burning fire. So I want you to watch down here, and let's just see if anything happens. Again, is this the same thing that I have burning right here? It is. So would you expect it to burn the same if I add more? No. One of you says no, and that's probably because no, because if it was the same thing, you wouldn't be showing us, right? Maybe. That's that's good scientific observation right there. You know, us usually when I ask something like that, there's a reason I ask it, and it's not because it's going to do the same thing. So let's drop a little, sprinkle a little of this on. Just watch what happens. See if you see any difference in the fire. I'll take, I'll take your responses as a yes. You saw something different. So does anybody have any idea why 
when we add the same thing that was already burning, does anybody have any idea why we get a very different result? Hey, there we go. It's out. Anybody? Any thoughts? Hallie, your hand's up. I don't care if you wish you hadn't put it up. Give us an answer. Why do you, why do you think it did something different? Because you put it when, it was, when the fire went on. Because you put it in when the fire was on. Okay, so the fire was already burning and we added more. So that's different than just starting the fire with it. That's possible. Okay, anybody else? Anybody on Zoom have any ideas? Again, you don't have to have a right answer. I just want to know what you think because a lot of science is about seeing things and trying to come up with explanations for it. So what is your explanation? Why did it do something different? Caleb? Maybe it's because you added more of the same chemical that made, made it, the fire keep going. Okay, so because we added more, because maybe we didn't have enough at first to make a big fire. Okay, Grace? Maybe because you sprinkled it on like very slowly and then it created a bigger reaction. Okay, why would that matter? Because you were adding more slowly and then the reaction got bigger slowly. Okay, you, and you're on the right track with that. All right, so you're saying because I added it slowly. What if we add it quickly? Do I have enough left to light here? I guess not. Let me make another little pile and try it again. Let's try, oh, it's burning a little bit, but not much. Let's add, oh, it's about to go out. There we go. We'll give it a little bit more. All right, so instead, so Grace made the observation. I added that very, very slowly. I'm going to add it quickly. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to dump it on. Are you ready? Three, two, one, dump. Oh, I missed. Hang on. Let's try this again. Let me get it a little closer. Three, two, one, dump. Well, it still kind of did it, but it did go out a lot quicker, right? It was just kind of a shoop instead of a, you know. So it, it did burn out quicker, but it still did something similar. But Grace is on the right track. She said because I sprinkled it on. And the interesting thing with this lycopodium the reason it's so flammable, and the reason anything burns, is fires need oxygen. That oxygen is what's going to keep the fire burning. It kind of fuels the fire. Um, if you, that's, that's the reason why when this was burning, I set the jar on top. Once it burned up the oxygen in the jar, what happened to the fire? It went out because it did not have enough oxygen in that jar for the fire to burn. Well, if you think about something like this lycopodium, if I have a big pile of it, that pile of lycopodium's got oxygen around it, right? But it doesn't have a lot of oxygen in it. It's able to burn on the outside because the oxygen's on the outside. But when I sprinkle it, you've got all these little particles kind of in the air, spread apart. They've all got oxygen around them. Each one can burn individually at the same time. When I lit this here, Sierra said it looked like a candle, right? Because it was burning very slowly just kind of burning that outer layer off. But when I sprinkled some on, the oxygen could get around all of it. It kind of made that whooshing sound because it was all burning very quickly. It didn't burn long, but it burned fast. That's the difference that oxygen can make on a flammable substance. The more oxygen is there, the faster it can burn and the more completely it can burn. Cooper? I was gonna say that it's kind of like connected dots, because we're like, Whenever you were doing it, the fire went to one, and then the oxygen, it was done burning that. So then it went to the other one, to the next one, and then so on and so on. And so it caused the fire to spread out. Yeah, exactly. And Cooper said kind of like connect the dots. That is almost what happens, right? Because the fire hits a few of them, and it does. It kind of jumps because as that burns, that makes enough heat to ignite the ones next to it and it kind of spreads just like you're connecting them all together, right? So now for the fun part, you know, that was a pretty cool demonstration, right? Not the first part, but the second part. We showed that property of flammability, but we showed it in an interesting way. Now, here's where it gets even better because what I can do, that was putting a little bit, sprinkling it on the fire. What if we pass a lot of it through the fire in a quick period of time, what's gonna happen? What'll happen? 
I'm going to turn my fire on here, right? I've got my torch. If we send a lot of it through this fire really quickly, what's going to happen? Say something louder. This is, this is, might make a loud noise, right? Might make a bigger fireball too, right? Let's find out. So here we go. All right, we've got some, we've got a straw full of this lycopodium powder. And on the count of three, I'm just going to blow it through the fire. Watch carefully, see if you can see what happens when this combusts, when it burns very completely and very quickly. Is everybody ready? All right, here we go in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> so, flammable materials. Who sees why it's a dangerous flammable material now? And that's the interesting property of flammable powders like this. It's not that you can make a pile of it and burn it like a candle. The thing that makes it dangerous is when these particles get airborne. And if these particles, what if, what if we spilled a jar of this in the room? And all of those little particles got into the air. And then somebody lit a match. That would be bad, right? So the reason that we need to be careful when we're working with these flammable materials, in a lot of cases, it's when it's airborne or it's the vapors. Gasoline's a good example. Uh, you probably see the, the cop movies on TV where all the bad guys running away in the car and they shoot it and hit the gas tank and the car explodes. That's not really the way gas works and that's not really the way fire works. You know, I could take gasoline, I could pour a puddle of gasoline on this table, light it on fire, and it's just going to sit there and burn. It's not going to explode. With flammable liquids, the gas, the vapor coming off of it, that's the part that you see burning. With flammable solids like this, and you know, things that can be explosively flammable solids, it's because of that dust. There's a lot of things that would not normally burn. I can take iron powder, and I can make iron powder burn. Not, not quite as good as the lycopodium can, but I can burn iron powder. Let's burn some iron powder. Let me go get some. I'll show you. <laughs> 